Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be talking about controlling the ease curves on keyframe-based animation inside of DaVinci Resolve 14. So what I mean by that is whenever you set up keyframes in your clip, your uh, clip is going to try to animate between the values set on those keyframes from one point to the other point. So for instance, if I set a keyframe in the inspector over here in the top right for, let's say, the zoom, at this particular point in the keyframe, uh, in the timeline, sorry, and we come over here to a different point, and we set a new value, which will automatically uh, make the diamond red, indicating a new keyframe point, then by default, as it goes between those two keyframes, the first keyframe and the second keyframe, it's going to animate between those values. You can see how when I scrub, the values automatically change, even though we only have two values set at the different keyframes. Now, when we do this by default, it's a linear-based animation, which means no matter where we are between those two points, it's increasing or decreasing between the two values set at a constant rate, a linear rate. And that's where controlling the ease curves comes in. So we can see all of the keyframes set on a clip by clicking on this icon in the bottom right-hand corner of the clip, which will show you where the two keyframes are located at. And while you have that open, if you drag on the timeline, it will automatically snap to any keyframe points you have set. Now that's useful for going between keyframe points, but if you want to control the curves, you need to click on the icon right to the left of it, which is going to give you this box. Now to actually see exactly what's happening on the timeline, we need to click at the bottom here and drag this down so that we can see the full graph of our keyframe-based animation. So you can see here that this is a graph of value against time. So time is the left-right axis, and value is the bottom-to-top axis. You can see going from 0 to 4 here, but that's going to depend completely on uh, which attribute or which property you're controlling the keyframes for. So while we have this curve graph open, you can see the linear transition from one value to the other across time. It increases at the same rate no matter where it is between these two keyframe points. And if I set a third keyframe, it's still going to be linear, as you can see. Now when we click on any of these points, you'll notice that the linear one, or the right-hand option, is the one that's checked. But we can change these to some of these other curve options. So how it works is if we choose the one on the left, we will get a curve controller on the right-hand side, if we choose the second option, we get a curve controller for both the left hand and right hand side. But note, you can only do that on points in the middle. So the middle option does not apply over here, and it would not apply over there, because those are the first and last keyframes in this clip for that property. And then this option over here will give us a curve control on the left hand side. So let's try with the curve controls on both sides. You can see it immediately gives us a curve here. Now, how these curves work between the keyframes is because left and right is time, the more time has to occur for it to reach this keyframe, the slower the animation is. But the sharper it goes up here, the faster it's basically going to change. So if I bring this point up here, it's actually going to change the final value of that keyframe point which is going to mean that this animation is going to happen way faster. So you can see it's zooming in considerably faster than before. We can actually go ahead and play that back here. So a very fast zoom. We can drop this down to about where it was before, and we can play the clip back again to show a less extreme zoom effect. Now, this is where the curve handles come into play, giving you basically a Bezier curve between your two keyframe points of animation. So by pulling these curves out, it's going to change from a linear value into a new type of animation which is going to ease in or ease out at different rates. So if I, for instance, pull this curve way up here, it's going to give us a weird effect where it's actually going to get to a higher zoom value than the final point. So it's going to zoom in really fast, and then it's going to zoom out a bit to reach our final point. But if we want just a simple ease curve, we should make sure that the value never goes higher than the point on the left or the right. So keeping the curve within the bounds. Of course, you can see that when we have this middle curve selection, because these two curve controls influence both sides 
you might actually want to be using the right hand curve selector or the left hand curve selector instead. But if we play it back here with something kind of basic, it's going to zoom in faster at the start than it is at the end. Because at the end, you see how it gets really flat, which means a lot of time progresses, but not much change in the value progresses. But here, since it's going upwards more, it's going to zoom in really fast over a short period of time. So let's play that back and you should be able to see kind of what I mean. Right, so as time progresses, the zoom effect becomes less and less dramatic, but at the start, it zooms in fast. Now, because it's controlling both sides of the curve, we're also simultaneously going to get a slow zoom out at the start once we hit this keyframe, and then when it gets close to this final point, it's going to zoom back out pretty fast. So, you'll see what I mean? The zoom effect gets much more dramatic as we reach that third keyframe. So, to show off the other curve options, uh, we select this one here, and now there's only one nonlinear curve, and it's on the left. So this curve handle over here now is going to have no impact on anything except the first keyframe point and the second keyframe point, which is probably going to give us better control in the long run. So let's say rather than having a fast zoom in effect at the start and a slow finish at the end, let's have it be a slow start with a quick finish by making this curve start slow and then end fast. So let's play this back. So it eases in very slowly, but the ending is fast. And now we could do the opposite over here. So now because we only have to have one of these keyframes actually have a curve control, and we want to leave this one alone but while changing this one, we'll just come over here and set another left-hand curve control. So let's do the opposite here, where once it reaches that keyframe, it's going to be a very slow zoom out that ends with a very fast zoom out. So eases in slow, ends fast. And then just for fun, let's demonstrate one more. If you want to actually add a keyframe while you're within this timeline graph, you can just hit Alt and then left click on your mouse and it will instantly add a new keyframe. So cool trick for you guys there. Now let's add something a little crazy. Let's add another left hand curve selector. And now I'm just going to have this crazy animation between these two keyframes. So although it's ending and starting at the same value, between those two points, it's going to have a wild zoom in and zoom out effect. So as you can see, you can do some pretty crazy stuff with the curve control tools for your keyframe based animations in DaVinci Resolve. But you as the editor have complete control over what goes on here exactly. So I really recommend you come in here, experiment with some of these different curve options and see what you can come up with. Uh, one final thing I do want to point out here, if you want to easily be able to go between these keyframes, you can of course uh, drag the timeline indicator and snap to them, but you also have this tool in the top right hand corner. You can hit left here to go to the previous keyframe, or you can hit the right arrow to go to the next keyframe. So just another cool trick for you guys, but that's going to be pretty much it for this video. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.